Okay, so our third and final case study for transboundary pollution in Europe um, is going to be called the Tiza Danube cyanide spill. So on January 30th of the year 2000, a large amount of cyanide spilled into a river in Eastern Europe. Cyanide is a toxic chemical that is used in mining and other industries. This accidental spill triggered the worst environmental disaster in Europe since Chernobyl. And in fact, many people call this spill the water Chernobyl. Central and Eastern European countries are still seeing the effects of this disaster today. So this accident occurred when a mining operation in Romania, uh, which is one of the 19 European countries through which the Danube River system flows, was using cyanide to separate gold from other less valuable rock. And then what they did is they stored the cyanide behind a pond that forms behind this small dam that you can see um, is broken. On the night of the spill, a, a very heavy rain swelled the pond, causing the water to reach dangerous high levels. Um, then the dam could no longer hold the water behind it, and so it burst. About 100,000 cubic meters of water that was laced with cyanide spilled out into this pond and into the river system. The surge of the toxic waste was enough to fill up about 30 olympic size swimming, uh, swimming pools. So the cyanide spill first went into the Sosmos River in Romania. So if you look at this map, you can see where it started. Look for the little barrel there on January the 31st. And then you can see exactly kind of the route that it went. So it first started in the Sosmos River, which is in Romania. Uh, the Sosmos then carried the toxic waste into Hungary, where it entered the Tiza River. The Tiza River then empties into the Danube River, which then carries uh, the spill across Serbia and Montenegro, uh, which was then one country, and then into Bulgaria. Finally, the cyanide emptied into the Black Sea on February the 20th of that same year. Um, so just kind of looking at the timeline, where it started, where it spread, um, and you will also see a little key as to how um, toxic the level of cyanide was over on the right, and I'm going to come back to this uh, map here in a little bit as well. So the first sign of this transboundary pollution was unfortunately the dead fish. The cyanide killed over 200 tons of fish as it washed down the Tiza River. Otters, who also lived in this area of the three rivers, died by the hundreds after eating the poisoned fish. And the river's birds, uh, sorry, the river's bird population, um, especially the, fe the fish eating species, were also affected. This toxic spill also affected the water supply of some 2.5 million people along the Danube River system. Fearing the pollution, towns along the Tiza and the Danube River shut down their water systems. So people near the rivers uh, were flying black banners and posting warning signs for people to stay away from the river. Also during this time, many tourists who had planned to visit um, these countries and the river system around it uh, had canceled their air, uh, had canceled their trip to the area fearing contamination. So, and again, to impacting um, the environment, it also economically impacted this area due to um, losing money out on tourism. All right, so let's take a look here at your notes, okay? So first off, this is an accident, okay? This was an accidental pollution example. Uh, there were no plans to, you know, purposely and intentionally release that cyanide into the river system. However, it did happen and it got in there, so it is an accident. At the root and at the core of this problem, we have the burst dam, okay? So the accidental water pollution occurred when a dam containing cyanide broke and then the cyanide is now getting into the river system. So it's a little bit different than air pollution, which both other case studies we've looked at so far, once it gets into the air, it pretty much can go anywhere. Once a, a pollutant or a toxic chemical gets into a water system, it's pretty much contained to where that water flows, but that is the root of the problem. So make sure you're caught up on your notes, press pause on the video if you need to do that. All right, so the consequences of this, okay, so as the, the toxic chemicals flew, uh, were flowing throughout the Tiza Danube um, River system, and again, that was approximately from January 31st to February 20th, so um, almost four weeks of impact, maybe more like three. Um, ultimately, what it did is it killed 200 tons of fish, 
hundreds of otters and many, many birds uh, that ate those fish and depended on those fish as part of their diets. So unfortunately, uh, wildlife was probably impacted the most. Also, tourism was impacted, people canceling their trips and these countries losing money. And then ultimately, people having to shut down their water systems and having to go find water somewhere else. Um, the one silver lining or positive thing with this accidental pollution is that no humans were killed. Um, cyanide is toxic and deadly to humans, but we had figured out that the toxic chemical was in the water system before anybody drank it or exposed themselves to it. So really the impact uh, truly was on the environment, the animals, um, and ultimately the economy as well. So efforts to reduce water pollution. So coming back to this, the deadly effects of the cyanide did not last for long. Uh, good news is kind of different than Chernobyl and radiation is cyanide does break down by the sunlight. So the longer is exposed to the sun, the more uh, or the less harmful the cyanide becomes. So if you look at this key, you can see when it entered the river system, it, Initially, there were medium to high levels of cyanide for the first few days. And by the time it got to the Tisa and the Danube, you were looking at lower levels of cyanide. Um, it's still harmful. It's still bad. It's still ruined the environment, but it could have been a lot worse. Um, so by the time that the spill actually reached the Danube, it was no longer toxic to fish. However, fish populations in the Sosmos and the Tisa rivers were affected, were affected. And even though they have returned to their normal population numbers today, there are now fewer overall species. Some species of fish uh, were completely killed out. So other than kind of a good a good thing, okay, so we know that, you know, this is not as deadly and not, I wouldn't say it is as harmful and as awful as Chernobyl um, because the pollutant didn't last for long and it did lose its uh, potency, if you will. There are other um, consequences of this and as well as some positive things. So one positive outcome of this spill is it really focused people's attention for the first time on pollution, especially water pollution in Eastern Europe. Um, in addition to mining accidents, the runoff from farms, uh, which add chemicals and fertilizers to the river water, boats who pollute it with their oil and their lead, factories which dump their waste in there, um, many towns also dump untreated human waste or sewage into the waterways. Um, so just understanding, and you may have seen um, some of these uh, little stickers, if you have a drain or if you have um, a waterway area near you, this is just simple awareness. Just being aware that you cannot put things down your drains and things into the waterways because once it gets in the water, it's going to lead throughout the whole water system. So something that you may do here at home in Mason is eventually going to make its way to the Ohio River, which then leads to the Mississippi, which then leads to the ocean. So there is no containing pollutants once it gets into um, water. Um, the other thing is uh, drawing attention to plastics and microplastics and trash just getting dumped into waterways. I don't want to say it's not that people didn't know it before. They probably knew what they were doing is wrong, but just understanding how harmful it is to our um, plant life, animal life, and environment in general, I think there's more awareness now um, than there ever has been. So that's probably a good thing um, or a silver lining that can come from this accident. Um, also, the United Nations Environment Program and the European Union worked together um, after this uh Tisa Genoob cyanide spill, as well as many other organizations joined in, and they committed into helping solve the Danube's um, environmental problems. In addition, the International Commission for the Protection of the Danube River was established. Um, this is actually established in 1998. Um, there are 14 countries that share the Danube River system in the EU, and they work together to try to figure out ways to reduce transboundary pollution, especially in the water in this region. Um, another thing, too, that the International Commission for the Protection of the Danube River has done is they have, with the European Union, have created legislation as far as 
um, being very clear that if you do intentionally dump, and even in this case, the mining company who accidentally dumped toxic chemicals into the water, um, there are now very strict rules and fines associated with that. So if you are doing that and you cause an environmental disaster in the water, you do have to pay for the cleanup as well as repercussions to get the environment back to where it was. So that's one thing that they were able to do by working together. On June 29th, uh, 2004, about four years after this spill, the commission had held its first Danube Day. On that day, millions of people gathered along the banks of the Danube River. They came together to celebrate the river's past and to think about its future. Each country held its own different events, but it all began with one simple truth. Everybody lives downstream. So coming just back to the knowledge and the recognition, the recognition that um, people live along these rivers. They depend upon the water. Animals depend upon the water. Uh, life on earth is dependent on water. So by trashing it and, and putting chemicals in it, it's just not good for anyone in the long run. All right. So in our notes, okay, efforts to reduce water pollution, there really are two. Number one, just information, knowing what's going on about our local river systems, acknowledging that we can't just dump anything in the sewers. It's going to affect people. It's going to impact the water and eventually it's going to impact us. And the other thing with this, uh, as well as in the Danube, but here in the United States, you need to be aware of this as well. Uh, there are fines when you break water laws, and there are really strict water laws. Um, so in Europe, you have the International Commission for the Danube River. But here in the United States, we have something called the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency. And there are very clear laws, national, state, and local level laws um, that, that state uh, – consequences, especially for paying money or possibly going to jail if you intentionally or accidentally dump toxic waste and chemicals into the river. So by holding people accountable and having consequences for these things, hopefully we'll have people uh, clean up their act. All right. And the last thing you need to do on your map here is follow the four steps on the right. Highlight the source of the water pollution in the Tiza Danube uh, cyanide spill. Underline the name of the country where the pollution actually started. Uh, shade in on your map where the pollution spread. And circle the names of two countries that were uh, affected by the spread of this water pollution. So if you need to go back in the video and find some of those images and maps to help you out, please do so at this time.